Now, throughout the morning, we've been hearing about the row over off-road driving lessons for children aged as young as 11. Some motoring organisations think the lessons in empty car parks or in airfields will make youngsters more responsible. Yes, but a road safety charity fears it could actually lead to more accidents once they pass their tests. Motoring expert Quentin Wilson is here along with his 11-year-old son Max. Morning to you. Morning. Also Joanna Bailey um, from the road safety charity break. Morning all. Um, let's just set up with you, Max, because I know that you've had driving lessons. Uh, you were only 11. You've had about five. Um, just tell us about the kind of things that you learned from those driving lessons. Well, I've learned the machine is not a toy. It's actually it's a piece of actually deadly equipment. But if you if you treat it um, with respect, it will treat you with respect. Wow. Well, there you go. And you've also learned some really practical skills as well, because you can parallel park, can't yes, you? Yes, I can. <laughs> Quentin, I mean, people will straight away, be, they know you're into motoring, and they're thinking, you know, Dad's into motoring, he wants to get his son into a car as soon as possible. I mean, is this, is this just a, is this a sort of whim, or is it something more than that? You think I it's really important? He doesn't give a hoot about cars. His sister, his five-year-old sister, is more interested in cars than he is. So this isn't a kind of vicarious thing for me. There is this research in Sweden, where this has come from, that you said 40% reduction in driving uh, accidents with this younger age, age group if they uh, get this early tuition. Now, that's a really significant figure, and we just don't know. So I'm saying expose children to this earlier and see what happens, because we know that at 17, they're not as good at taking instruction. They're not as, 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 as malleable as, as, as this age group. So I think, you know, take away the peer pressure, take away all that testosterone, get them to do what's known as the under the dashboard stuff automatically so when they do come to learn to drive that precious time they on the road can be used to decode all that complicated road stuff well uh, this uh, what do you think Joanna I mean on the face of it you, you hear that and you think well that all makes sense doesn't it a bit more responsibility it, can you see any, anything to worry you about this at the end of the day if we had lots of drivers taking Max's attitude about driving that would be fantastic at the end of the day what we've got to look at is as Quinton's saying is what happens afterwards it's great to get uh, into a situation where you understand the controls but being on the road is a very dif different situation and the st statistics also show that if you learn to drive a little bit later in life you are less likely to have an accident than you are uh, earlier so ultimately we need to find a way of having a graduated license where people are getting skills gradually and getting out and about on different levels of road which require different levels of risk yeah, lots of people getting in touch. Uh, and here's one. I think that putting a child at the wheel of a car at the age of 12 is quite absurd and ridiculous. The youngsters of today think they know everything, in my opinion. Quentin, I wonder if that, that's one for you in a way. I mean, is there a danger that they sort of, when they do finally at 17 get on the road, they think, you know, I can do this. No, no worries. Isn't that complacency could be a problem? I have seen these children get out of these cars as young as Max with a high seriousness, with a real zeal and commitment in their eyes. And they're not talking about driving fast, they're talking about the craft, using words like craft and skill and all this sort of thing. We don't know, but saving 40,000 accidents a year is really a very good goal to go for. So mm. I think we just need to debate this, we need to look at it, we need to try and understand if this changing of behaviour is better than speed cameras. Mm. Um, I'm also in interested to know as well from um, your point of view, Max, because people think, oh, there's lots of people, they'll think, oh, he's spoiled, um, it's way too young. Do you think you're too young to be learning? Why should you learn now when you're only 11, not wait, wait a couple of years? Well, I think it's a, a unique time I actually learn about driving because I'm very curious about everything at this age now. Mm -hmm. And I've actually, and driving is just, I pay attention, just not, not like anything else. I, it's just amazing what you could do during this, these lessons. It's, mm. just, it's just lovely how you do it. Yeah, uh, this one's coming from Kit in Milton Keynes, who says, my concern is when they've got the driving bug, that might lead to joyriding at a later stage. <laughs> the reason uh, he, sorry, or she, Kit, I don't know which it is, says that, is this happened to me, they say, in the 1970s, and I regret it to this day. It could lead to that, but you know, I think there's a lot in the media about you know, youngsters not doing what they should be doing actually many youngsters are very responsible people it's about leading them in the right direction we're all after the same thing reducing the number of accidents on our roads there were over 2,800 people killed or seriously injured ironically 124 of which were children in 2008 so yes we've got to find ways of reducing those figures as a personal injury lawyer I see the results of those accidents on my desk every day and we've got to get those reduced. It's driver education.
that will do it. Okay. I firmly believe it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joanna. Thank, thank you very you much, uh, Quentin and Max. Um, and thank you all as well for all your texts, the audience and emails. The audience really completely divided on this one. Absolutely. Um, thank you very much.